I'm reminded of that famous line from Cool Hand Luke. What we have here is a failure to communicate. What we have here in Congress is a failure to legislate, a failure to exert congressional authority. What we have here is a failure to use our leverage. What we have here is a failure to use the power of the purse. Conservatives across America are unhappy, and rightly so. We were told that when we took over Congress, when Republicans were elected to Congress, that things would be different. That if voters put us in charge, we would right the ship. We would stop the deficits. And here we are with another continuing resolution. What is a continuing resolution? It is a continuation of the deficit spending of the past. It is a continuation of the waste. It is a continuation of the duplication. What is a continuing resolution? It is a steaming pile of the same old, same old. Let me be clear. A continuing resolution is not a good thing. It is more of the status quo. It is a warmed over version of yesterday's failures. It is an abdication of congressional authority. It is an abdication of congressional power. Let us at least be honest. With a continuing resolution, no waste will be cut, no spending will be cut, no regulations will be stopped, and the debt will continue to mount. We are told that we cannot win, that we need 60 votes to defund anything, but perhaps there is an alternate future where courage steps up and saves the day. All spending is set to expire automatically. This is the perfect time to turn the tables, to tell the other side that they will need 60 votes to affirmatively spend any money. You see, it doesn't have to be 60 votes to stop things. All spending will expire, and only those programs for which we can get 60 votes should go forward. What would that mean? That would mean an elimination of waste, an elimination of duplication, an elimination of bad things that we spend money on. If we had the courage, we could use the Senate's supermajority rules to stop wasteful spending. If we had the courage, we could force the other side to come up with 60 votes to fund things like Planned Parenthood. The budget is loaded with nonsense and waste. Some will say our job is to govern, to preside. But to preside over what? To preside over a mountain of new debt? To be the same as the other side? To continue to add debt after debt? Our debt will consume us if we continue to preside over the status quo. It is as if we're on the Titanic and just simply reshuffling the chairs. A continuing resolution continues the spending of wasteful money. I can go on and on about what we're wasting money on. I'll tell you of a few. We spent $300,000 last year studying whether or not Japanese quail are more sexually promiscuous on cocaine. I think we could poll the audience and save money. These things should never have money spent on, but if you do a continuing resolution, it will continue. We spent several hundred thousand dollars studying whether or not we can relieve stress in Vietnamese villagers by having them watch American television reruns. I don't know about you, but I don't want one penny of taxpayer dollar going to this ridiculous stuff. If we continue, if we pass a continuing resolution, no reform will occur. We spent $800,000 in the last couple years developing a televised cricket league for Afghanistan. $800,000. Do you know how many people have a television in Afghanistan? One in 10,000 people, and I don't care if they've all got TVs. It's ridiculous that our money 
which we don't even have. We have to borrow it from China to send it to Afghanistan. If you pass a continuing resolution, you're agreeing to continue this nonsense. We spent $150,000 last year on yoga classes for federal employees. So not only do we pay them nearly one and a half times as much as the private sector employees, we give them yoga classes. If you pass a continuing resolution, this goes on and on. Nothing will change. The status quo will continue and we will continue to spend ourselves into oblivion. We spent $250,000 last year inviting 24 kids from Pakistan to go to space camp in Alabama. We borrow money from China to send it to Pakistan. It's crazy, it's ridiculous, and it should stop. We have the power to stop it. Congress has the power to spend money or not spend money, and yet we roll down and we just say, we roll over and we say, it must continue. We don't have the votes to stop it. Nonsense. The other side doesn't have the vote to continue the spending if we would stand up and challenge them. We spent a half a million dollars last year or the year before developing a menu for when we colonize Mars. We sent a bunch of college students to Hawaii to study this. $5,000 a piece we paid them. They got two weeks, all expenses paid in Hawaii. And you know what a bunch of college kids came up with for the menu for Mars? Pizza. This is where your money's going. I could go on hundreds and hundreds of programs if we do not exert the power of the purse, this continues. We should attach to all of the spending bills, all 12 individual spending bills, not glommed together, we should attach hundreds of instructions, thousands of instructions. Now some of the media have said, well, those would be riders on appropriation bills. Exactly, that's the power of the purse. If you object to the president writing regulations without our authority, Congress should defund the regulations. Congress should instruct him on Obamacare, what we object to. Congress should instruct him that we don't want money spent on Planned Parenthood. Hundreds and hundreds of instructions should be written into every bill and passed and sent to them. Would we win all of these battles? Do we have the power to win every battle and defund everything we want? No. But you know what we start out with? Our negotiating position right now is we start out with we defund nothing. Why don't we start out with a negotiating position that we defund everything that's objectionable, all the wasteful spending, all the duplicative spending, let's defund it all. And if there has to be a negotiation, let's start from defunding it all and see where we get. But it would take courage because you would have to let spending expire. If you're not willing to let the spending expire and start anew, you have no leverage. The power of the purse is only there if you have courage. You must have the courage of convictions to say enough's enough, that the debt is a greater threat to us than letting spending expire. Now, some will report on this speech and say, oh, he wants to shut down government. No, I don't. I just want to exert the power of the purse, and that means spending must expire. But I'm all for renewing the spending, but let's only renew the spending that makes sense. We have the power of the purse if we choose to exert it. Look at the mountain of debt. Look at the debt that continues to be added up. We have not been doing our job. The way we are supposed to spend money in Congress is 12 individual appropriation bills. They've passed out a committee. Why aren't they presented on the floor? The Democrats have filibustered the only one presented. Let's present every one of them and let the public know, let everyone in America know that it's Democrats filibustering the spending bills. It's Democrats who desire to shut down government. It's Democrats who desire not to have any restrictions on where the money's spent. It's the Democrats who are saying, we don't want to end wasteful spending. We don't want to end any spending. We don't want any controls over spending. We want to continue the status quo. But we should not be complicit with them. We have allowed this to go on for too long. 
It threatens the very heart of the republic. It threatens our very foundations to continue to borrow a million dollars a minute. It's time that we stood up. It's time that we took a stand and said, enough's enough. When's the last time we did it in the appropriate fashion? When is the last time Congress passed each of the individual appropriation bills with instructions on how to spend the money? 2005, a decade ago. It's been a decade. In the last decade, we've added nearly $10 trillion in new debt. It's time to take a stand. I, for one, have had enough. I've had enough. I'm not going to vote for a continuing resolution. A continuing resolution is simply a continuation of the mounting debt. I, for one, will not do it. A continuing resolution is retreat. It is announcing your defeat in advance. What we should do is take a stand. We should say to the other side, in the Senate, it requires a supermajority. What does that mean? 60 votes to pass spending. What would happen? You would have spending that is controversial, like Planned Parenthood would fall away. They can ask for private donations. Good luck on that. You wouldn't find things being funded that are controversial. What would happen is there would no longer be funding for wasteful and duplicative product, projects. You know that we, we listed these a couple years ago, and I think we had $7 billion worth of just duplication. Did we fix it? No. Every year the president, even this president, puts forward 10, 15, 20 billion dollars worth of programs that could be eliminated. Do they ever get eliminated? No, because Congress is dysfunctional and we continue to pass a continuing resolution, which means we do nothing to exert the power of the purse. Congress is a shadow of what it once was. Madison said that we would have co-equal branches and that we would pit ambition against ambition. We no longer do that. Congress is a withering shadow. It's a shadow of what it once was. Congress has no power, exerts no power, and we walk and we live in the shadow of a presidency that is growing larger and larger and larger. The president's not afraid. He says he's got his pen and his phone. So he is writing and creating law. One of our founding fathers, one of our philosophers they looked to is Montesquieu. And Montesquieu said, when the executive begins to legislate, a form of tyranny will ensue. That's what we've got now. We have executive tyranny. It's not just this president, though. It's been going on for a while. Probably for 100 years, we've been allowing more and more power to accumulate in the hands of the presidency. What we need is a bipartisan taking back of that power. We need Congress to stand up on its own two feet and say, enough's enough. We are reclaiming the power of the purse and we are going to do whatever is necessary to get rid of the wasteful spending, the duplicative spending, the offensive spending. And we are going to do what the American people want and that is to spend only what comes in. But I will tell you, I for one will oppose this continuing resolution and I recommend that everybody in America call their congressman and say, we're tired of the mounting debt. We want you to stand up. We want you to stand up and say enough's enough. Let the funding expire and make the other side come up with 60 votes to spend the money. It's time we took a stand. I hope we will. Thank you, Mr. President.